All right, everyone, welcome to Sour Horsepower. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at this 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L Summit Reserve. All right, to start off today's video, we'll be taking a look at the key for the Jeep Grand Cherokee L Summit Reserve, the very long name. But um, if you haven't seen my previous uh, Grand Cherokee L review, I did a limited. So a lot of the stuff I covered in that, um, I'll link it in the description below. But we're gonna kind of highlight some of the things that stand out on the Summit Reserve. But the key is the same as the limited, so there's no change here. You don't get any fancier key for getting the higher trim. This one does come with remote start, the power tailgate lift as well, and then of course your unlock and your lock. Let's go ahead and do a quick walk around of the Grand Cherokee L Summit Reserve. Very long name, like I said. Um, at the front, you got your, this is your gonna be your adaptive cruise control and stuff. You got a uh, front forward facing camera hidden away there in the dash. Let's see, the LED lights across the top. These are your daytime running lights. Uh, some fog lights down there as well. Also LED, your parking sensors here in this faux grill it's, unfortunately it's blocked off um, let's actually take a look and see how much of it is open so you got that little bit there across the bottom and then a little bit in the middle and then of course the seven slats across the top there is all opened up all right so continuing to move down the side here the wheels that the summit reserve is on here today let's take a look at the size where are they hidden here 275 45 r21 so 21 inch wheels they are with the Continental Cross Contacts. So that's gonna be your tire, wheel and tire of choice here for the Summit Reserve. Got the nice Grand Cherokee badge on the side with the American flag that's kind of standard on all the uh, Grand Cherokee L's. And I think even the Grand Wagoneers are coming with that now. So let's continue moving on. So on, I think it's on all the trims, maybe not the Laredo's, but all the mid to high tier trims, they have this chrome little accent it goes all the way around the vehicle it wraps from each side across the back and all the way back over to the front so along the back bumper here you have this little center section here where you can remove for the trailer tow group that's where your hitch would be below the silver piece there you'll see that the lower fascia of the bumper is actually paint matched to the body color um, that is something that i noticed is not on the limiteds the limiteds have just they're all flat black plastic across the bottom but on the summit reserve and probably i would assume the overland as well the more premium trims of the grand cherokee l will have it painted across the bottom all right so now as we finish up our walk around to the exterior there's not really too much to differentiate between the grand cherokee l trims um, basically it's just wheels and tires and the extra painted bits on the outside that's the only real difference you can tell and then some of the chrome cladding like this part right here the silver is not on the limiteds or some of the lower trims but overall the grand cherokee l is kind of the same on the exterior but where the big difference is and where all the money is spent on these vehicles is on the interior so let's go check it out all right so we got the front driver door open and immediately right off the bat you can tell that this is a very 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 premium interior now i did knock the limited that i looked at a little bit because the wood felt like, like kind of cheap and it didn't feel like real wood but this this is legit real wood you can actually feel the grain inside of it below that you get some really nice like cross pattern like quilted stitching going on the macintosh radio system which um i'll show you when i start it up that actually lights up a little bit you get some even more leather wraps down here along the bottom so that's the door panel and as you can see look at oh look at this interior so beautiful so again you got the same type of wood that carries over from the door all the way across so you can see on the passenger side how it carries over very very nicely designed the seats summit logo here white piping with some orange stitching for the, the reserve summit reserve package the same quilting here you got the perforated leather so you get your vented seats down here you have your seat controls 
Now, the one thing that actually kind of doesn't match the whole interior of the vehicle is the floor mats. They kind of just seem, I mean, they're, they're thick and they're plush, but they kind of just don't match the rest of the interior. You would almost expect them to have like some of the piping and stuff and the quilting that the rest of the vehicle has. But that's one thing that's uh, <laughs> kind of missing on this one. All right. So one of the main things I want to test out um, in my Grand Cherokee Limited or L Limited review, the air conditioning system was obnoxiously loud. So I'm going to test it again to see if it is just as loud as it was in the other one. Okay, so it's loud, but it's nowhere near as loud as that Limited was. So that's a plus. Before on the Limited, like I couldn't even have it at like three or four and film it was so loud. So that's a good thing to see. Maybe that was the one that I just reviewed first was a little bit faulty. But there's a couple things that I did want to touch on or I guess also examine just to see right off the bat how they differ from that Limited that I reviewed. So we're going to go here to Vehicle. I actually took a little long to... Um, switch over there so one thing rear view camera I want to take a look at and the quality on the rear view camera is still not great um, yeah it's still the old style camera it's not very high definition I mean it kind of looks good on the phone camera but in person you can tell it's very very low resolution so you have the rear view camera here and then you also have the front facing camera which actually now it's about the same quality, so they probably just used the same camera on the back and put it on the front, didn't change at all. But as you can see here, you have the wheel tracks from where, you know, you'd be driving. And if you turn your wheel, it shows you where your wheels would go. And then you have your clean camera button here that has a sprayer on the front to clean mud or whatever debris is on the front of the camera. Uh, let's see, mirror dimmer fam cam, let's see if that looks the same. So here, yep. Okay, and then I think one cool thing, you can actually hit which seat. Yep, there you go. So you can look in on individual seats. So there's not, there's no like real divide here showing on the screen, but if you just tap the seat over here, it shows you where it's looking like. Okay, yeah. All right, so that's really cool. This vehicle is also equipped with the surround camera. So here you can see full 360 degree surround view. Then you can over here pick which one you want to look at. So you have your rear view, you have a, uh, the it's more of like a bumper or like a tailgate close-up rear view, I guess, if for uh, trailers or something like that. And then you have your front cam, different front cam, and then same thing. Okay. All right, so another thing I did want to check out on this Grand Cherokee L is from, I noticed it from the last review I did, the screens. So if you hit this button here, so I wanted to take a little dive into this a little bit more. So you can change what they look like. So you can put that there, you can do, let's see, can we go over? Can't change that one, but what can we put here? So it looks like your adaptive cruise and that's about it. What can we put here? So you can change different temperatures, so some of your monitoring stuff. So tire pressure, sure, that looks good. Can you change this at all? Let's see, okay, trip A. So that's all it really does. It just gives you a different view. So it's like more like a quick, what's the way to, to describe that? It's more like a quick review or like a quick view to like shortcutted menu. So that way when you're here at the main menu, you don't have to scroll through. Oh, map display is loading. Okay, so you don't have to scroll all the way through. This way you can just hit that. Boom, I can see like my tire pressures and all the trip stuff immediately and then you can click back. So that actually is kind of cool. It just gives you a different um, setting. One thing I do notice, I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah, that's not pleasant, but <laughs> it is what it is. So as you can see here, we have the air suspension, which is controlled over here in the middle by this toggle. So you can either go up or down to raise it or lower it. So let's, let's drop it all the way down into its lowest settings. I wonder if I open the door. Okay, vehicle cannot be lowered. Closed doors, let's see what happens. So it should continue. So it honks whenever you get out with the key in your pocket. But as you can see, I should probably do a, a different view here, shouldn't I? All right, so that's gonna be its lowest setting. Now I'm gonna go ahead and raise it back up and then 
watch it get whooped because I kind of screwed up <laughs> the lowering part of it. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and hit that a couple times. And then now it's going all the way up. So now the back's going up. And so it does like a back front thing, so now the front's going up. And then the back again. Man, this actually goes pretty dang tall. Okay, so if uh, I'll look up the, I'll put the ground clearance numbers here at the bottom of the screen to actually show you the difference between the lowered setting and the upper setting, if I can find them on the internet, hopefully. But yeah, let's, um, before we continue on, I forgot to do my normal thing, which is look at the window sticker to see what this vehicle actually has. All right, so on the window sticker here, we got a base price of $58,995 for the Grand Cherokee Summit 4x4. So the Summit Reserve is actually going to be a extra optional group on top of the regular Summit. So with that being said, let's go ahead through the standard equipment. Get your Quadra Track 2. Let's see, I'm not going to read off everything, just things that kind of pop out to me. Your adaptive cruise control is standard on the Summits, um, which also comes with your active lane management, your collision warnings, surround view camera, blind spot, side distance warning. That's interesting. I guess that's for off-roading, possibly. Uh, let's see, the air suspension is standard on the Summit. Then you get uh, hill start assist, some other stuff. Active damping, which I guess would go with the air suspension. Interior features, so standard is gonna be the Uconnect 5, which we just saw, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all the bells and whistles, heated steering wheel, heated front seats, ventilated front seats, and heated second row seats are standard on the Summit. And then what else we got? So the Summit comes standard with 20 inch wheels, 20 by eight and a half inch wheels on 265 50 20s. When you get the reserve, it takes you up to the 21 inch wheels uh, on the 275 45 21s, which we already talked about. You also get the 19 speaker high performance Macintosh audio as seen right here. That little Macintosh logo lights up. Um, now what else do we got? An um, active noise control system. I guess that's part of the sound system and then ventilated rear seats oh, so that's nice palermo leather door trim i guess that's going to be this year this quilting is palermo and then the heads up display is a part of the advanced pro tech group which is this has um i'll put a little screenshot of then that in when we're driving uh, night vision oh we got to check out the night vision and then rear view auto dimming digital display Luxury tech group, which gives you the wireless charging pad and manual second row window shades. So since we got a little distracted when we were doing the uh, <laughs> uh, air suspension and stuff, let's go back here to the interior here. You got your heated seats, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, all your climate controls. Wireless charging pad is down there. I would put my phone down there to show you, but I'm using my phone to film right now. Here's where you have your uh, select track for the Quadra Track 2 system. And then over here you have, or was it Quadra Track or Quadra Drive? I'll put it up here. Doesn't really matter, they all work great because they're Jeep stuff. Here's the air suspension controller, which we already looked at. Hill descent controller over here. Here's your neutral indicator, four wheel drive low. You got some piano black, which does, as you can see, gets a little finger printy. Now just leave that open and have your uh, cup holders there. Let's see what we got inside here. Two little storage cubbies with no USB connectivity inside of them. I think I talked about that in my limited review that it's kind of weird that you don't have USB connectivity inside here, but I guess you get multiple plugs here with a wireless charger so that kind of covers them on that. Here's all the adaptive cruise control stuff. Let's see, anything else we need to talk about? I think that's pretty standard stuff. I already went through most of this in my L review, so I don't need to touch it again. This one does have a huge panoramic sunroof. So let's go ahead and do the shade. Open. There we go. Get some extra light in here. It goes back pretty far, basically to the end of the second row. Oh, let's hit it again. So you got to press it twice to get it to go all the way back. It kind of just stops after the first row on the first, first click, and then you have to press it a second time to go all the way back. Um, up here, you got you can open the tailgate from here. Um, this is for your light controls and then more of your 
sunroof controls. Everybody knows how they work, so I don't need to go over that anymore. Oh, hold on. I just noticed this. Is that what I think it is? Hold on. Hold on. All right. So actually, before <laughs> before I get distracted by that, um, there is no grab handle here. So I did notice that. And when you have, it's actually a pretty high vehicle. Um, I think, the, what setting do I have it in right now? I have it in the normal setting. So it's pretty high vehicle to get in and there's no grab handle to kind of pull yourself in. So you kind of have to use the steering wheel to get yourself in. But I think this button is, is it massage seats? <gasps> it is massage seats. Okay, so this button over here is a quick access to your massage seats. So when I press it, this comes up, driver massage seat. So waterfall, lower back extend, lower extend. Oh, come back. No, I'm not done with that yet. Come back here. Um, it said it was under comfort. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Front and then massage. So you can also control the rear climate from here as well. Okay. All right, so now I feel the massage. So you get driver and passenger side massage, as you can see here. Oh, this is fancy stuff. Rock climb. What is rock climb? It even gives you a little <laughs> graphic of what it's doing. This is... um. Lower extended, lower back, waterfall. I'm gonna sit back and just enjoy this for a second. Okay, yep, it's working. <laughs> so that's a uh, standard, I guess, here on the summit, or is it the summit reserve? I'm gonna, let's go check. I know we're kind of all over the place, but I'm kind of looking at this at the same time. You know, this is my first real look here at the summit reserve. I don't have a lot of time to play around with these because it's about to rain here and I'm trying to get this review done. So sorry for the kind of frantic filming that we got going on here, but I'm looking for the, where do they have it on here? Ah, okay. So it is part of the standard stuff on the summit and it is right here. It's going to be your front passenger power seat with back massager. Yeah, there you go. All right. So here, I know I've said it a million times, Macintosh logo lights up. You got some speakers up there in the front as well on each side in the doors, of course. Your microphones for your Bluetooth and stuff are up here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the back before we waste too much time on the front and frantically looking around. This video is probably going to be very long, but there is a lot of stuff to go through on this vehicle. Door on the rear is basically the same as the front. Um, you got a couple ways to move the seat, actually. So let's check this. The Front seat is in my driving position currently. Again, no grab handles to help you get back in, so you kind of have to hold on to the seat up here. So that is my driving position on the front. Let me zoom this back out. As you can see, plenty of leg room. Now the rear seat is sitting up kind of high. Do they recline? Yep, they do recline a little bit. Rear climate controls here. Some more piano black with your cup holders. A little storage cubby here. More cubbies inside of here. Does this fold up? Nope. Okay. That's that's all you got there. I think this might come out. So it's a little deeper there if you want it. Pockets on the back. Very nice. All right. So one of the cool things I did notice. I'm going to hop out of here real quick. So there's two ways of getting in the back. Actually, here. I did have some questions about this before. That's how far it slides forward. So it does give you a little bit of access there. So it slides there, and then it goes... That's as far back as it goes. So, for reference, that's as far back as the seat goes. Let's pull. Can I show you guys here? That's the amount of leg room in the third row. I'll hop back there in a second to show you. Um, two ways, though, to get the seat to fold forward. Do that, and it folds like that. The headrest did fold down automatically, so it clears the back of the front seat. You have some tethers here for child seats. And then, one thing you can do, you lift that up. You can use this one as well. So you use that and pull forward. It gives you even more access to the back seat, right? Now, one thing, so I did notice when I got in the vehicle, they, their third row was folded flat and I was like trying to lift it up. At least here on the Summit Reserve, probably just the standard Summit 2, these are power controlled here. So you have a lower button, or actually it's a raise button. Oh, it's for each side. See, even I got confused. So you can control each, so there's buttons over there. So each side is controlled by buttons over here. So if you press that again, it will fold down and hold it. It's gonna go all the way down. That's kind of nifty. And if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see on the back here. 
you got the same buttons back there. And the same here on this side. Press and hold the button. Oh, actually, you don't even need to hold it. You can just press it. One press. We're learning something new every single time. All right, now I'm going to jump in the back here in the third row and see exactly how I fit. Now, I am five foot eight, so I'm not the tallest, but most of the people in the back would probably be smaller children than me, so let's see if they can fit. So, access points, like I said, there's no grab handles to hold on to, so it's a little bit tough. You're going to have to hold onto the seat, climb up in, duck a little bit, your head, jump in. Ooh, all right, we're in the back here. Now, I guess just go ahead, pull this back. All right, so I'm in the back here. Um, headroom, oh, let's do it that way. Headroom, decent, like I said, only five foot eight. Um, the comfort on the sides here, these are just kind of padded plastic, nothing too too fancy all the way here in the back, but you do have some USB and USB-C. You have a vent here on the side for you. Um, let's take a look, what else we got? Um, that's pretty much it, that's the, um, Second row and third row power fold from back here. All right, so there is storage. You can access the center console here from the third row as well. So there's a little button down here. Pull that up. And look at that. You have access to the whole thing from the third row seat as well. That's actually kind of nice. Here's where the fam cam is that we already demonstrated earlier. And then as you can see here, the panoramic sunroof comes back to about the... Um, back of the second row seat. So to get out, push this forward, push up. Oh, that's what that does. That's an indicator for when it's not locked down. So, so if you have to, ah, so that's good to know. So it gives you a visual indicator if your seat is not pushed all the way down and then it comes up, you push forward, push that all the way forward and then try and get myself out. All right, so after my not so graceful exit out of the vehicle, so, one thing here, this, you weren't, I was not able to um, bring the second row seat back from the third row. So the leg room that I did show in the third row was kind of with it all the way forward. I couldn't necessarily push it back any further. Um, so like I showed you before, you do lose a significant amount of leg room there. But if you... There's plenty of room to move the seat forward, though, is what I'm trying to say. So you can have it there for most people, and then that opens up that much leg room for the person in the back. So I would say right now it's got plenty of leg room for most people. Um, second row, you also have these manual little sunshades here. So they kind of sit just like that when they're down. And you just grab them. Wish they were powered. Everything else in this vehicle is powered except the sunshades. Um, you can even get the seats to fold down power, but that's kind of odd that they don't have that as power. Um, moving along, let's take a look at the back here. The buttons over there, so it's power. Alrighty. So hold to set. Oh, so I guess you can set different heights for the, ta the tailgate. If you want it to like only come halfway up, you can hold that button to set it to a certain height. We already went over that. That's to fold the seats down. So three left. There you go. That's perfect. And then two right. Oh, that's a violent. Okay, let's see if that one does the same. Okay, that's quite violent, but it gets the job done. All right, so there's not much to look at back here. You got a nice carpet back here. Probably a spare wheel. Nope, no spare wheel under here. You got a jack and stuff. Probably a fix a flat kit. Some extra storage back here. You can raise this up. Is this a water drain? I believe it is. Oh, wait, no. That's for the... Sp oh, there's spare tires underneath. Gotcha. So you put your little jack tool in there and then the spare tires underneath that. All right, so with one press of that, tailgate's going to come down. And now let's go ahead and drive this thing. We went over a lot of the tech. I'm going to show the night vision and stuff. But, um, yeah, let's go take a drive. One other cool thing I have noticed is there's a light inside of the door handles here to help you see it at night. So it's the same on the front and the back. So there you go, nice little light there. All right, so here we are, Grand Cherokee L Summit Reserve. Got my ventilated seats on. Don't have the massage seats on, but one thing I do want to point out, immediately I noticed, let me see if I can replicate it. There's a hum. 
and I don't know what it's from. It's like a, almost like an exhaust drone. Do you hear that? Hopefully you guys can hear that on video. I have no idea what that is. I don't know if that's something with the active noise canceling that I saw on the window sticker, but very, very weird. Um, initial impressions, brake pedal is firm, obviously. We're only going down that, oh, that noise. I don't know about that. That is very weird. Okay. Anybody know where the night vision is? Do you hear that? I hope you guys hear that. Um, let's see. One thing I do need to find is the night vision. I have no clue where the night vision is. Let's, let's stop here real quick. I've got to hurry up though. I'm like running out of fuel. Night vision. All right, got it. So it's under the main menu. Hopefully you guys can see it here. Um, if not, I'll pull it up on my phone. Let's do that real quick. Automatic high beams. Thank you for telling me. So this is the night vision camera. So as you can see here, go drive around a little bit. It does this air suspension is really really soft. I will give it that. So we got a person up here. This actually will work pretty good. So you see him on the night vision, hopefully. Yep, saw that. Alright, so night vision is done. I'm done playing with all the toys. We're out for a drive. Initial impressions. Suspension is very soft. Seats, the seat backs are actually kind of um, on the firmer side, but the bottom cushion is really soft. Um, I guess I have to have the seat back pretty firm for the um, massaging stuff, but let's give it a little bit of power here. This is the V6 version, not the V8. Adequate power, nothing too fancy. Um, I'm not gonna be able to drive it too much because we're almost out of gas. But I'll just give you my initial impressions. Brake pedal, very firm. Suspension, very soft. Um, there's a lot going on here. The steering's actually kind of heavier than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was gonna be more like a, like a luxury SUV steering, which it is. Um, but it's actually very like, I wouldn't say heavy, but it's, um, it's not light and like like most luxury cars are. They're kind of just like buttery smooth and light. This is not like that. Let me get over here. Well, I'm going to smack the bag real quick. Brake pedal again. Like I said, very, very firm. I would like to drive it a little bit more, but we are almost out of gas, unfortunately. So we just got about another like half a mile or something. Um, but when we get back to the dealership and I park it up, I'll give you my like final thoughts. But so far, everything seems to be just a little bit of creaking here and there. That drone, I have no idea what that drone is. Is ah, No clue. If you guys know, tell me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't really know what, what, else, what much else to say about that. The I'm glad to see that on this model, at least, the air conditioning is not as brutal um, when it comes to the, the volume <laughs> of it. Um, but yeah, overall, it's it's a very, very highly equipped vehicle. I don't even know if I went over the total price. I'm a bad YouTuber today, guys. I'm sorry. And I can't see it because of the, the window shades. So when we get back, I'll go over the full price. My final thoughts on this because that GoPro is about to die. See, I'm just unprepared, guys. Stay tuned. Hopefully you're still watching. All right, so you're gonna be just on this cam right now. The um, transmission, super smooth. The lane keep is actually like kind of tugging at the steering wheel. I didn't realize I had the lane keep still on. It's vibrating the steering wheel like on the particular side that I'm getting close to going over and it's also kind of tugging it. Now you can adjust the, the responsiveness of those settings, I'm sure, but it, it's over here on the bottom right hand corner if you can't see it. Um, it has a little car with the two little lanes. It's green if you're good and orange if you're not. Let's go ahead, turn in the dealership and give you my final thoughts. All right, so my final thoughts on the Grand Cherokee. Very smooth ride. Transmission smooth, suspension smooth. Seats are comfortable. They have the massage, the heated, the cooled. You get all the tech you want with the screen. You have all the off-road settings you could want. The air suspension, raise and lower it. All the power stuff with the seats, the tailgate, everything is powered, super convenient, super luxurious. The leathers are soft, 
The wood is nice. Very, very, very well put together vehicle. Um, the only complaints I have are that drone, that mysterious drone while driving it. And the backup cameras are still not quite that good for the amount of money you're spending on this vehicle. But overall, it checks every single box um, when it comes to luxury um, that you could want. And at around, I'll, I'll get, I'll put the price along the bottom here because I got to go check the window sticker. I believe it's like sixty-six thousand. If not, I'm completely wrong. But it'll be here on the screen. Um, it's very, very good. Like I said, all the tech you could want. Um, yeah, just a couple nitpicks here. It is the very first model year for it, so you do kind of expect those sorts of things when it comes to a first model year of a whole new vehicle. So hopefully going forward, they address some of those. And then, yeah, but if you're interested in one, definitely go test drive it. If those little things, like I said, they don't bother you, enjoy the vehicle. It's very, very comfortable, very good. And it's gonna be damn capable of road too, as you've probably seen in other videos. So yep, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, take care, have a great day.